Struggling to cancel long-running jobs? In this video, I will show you how to use Redis and Cancellation Token to build a system for on-demand cancellations. Let's get started. Let me show you what we are dealing with. So, I have background job that is responsible of importing patient records. I have an endpoint here where you send a file, we validate the file if it is valid with the same header that we need, and then we save the file into a temp directory and we create a new import job to the database with the status of enqueued. Import jobs will be used later on in the import job background service where we are looping through all the jobs, checking for the enqueued jobs, start processing each job independently, setting it as running, reading the file. Basically here, we are reading the file from the temp directory, line by line from the stream, and then insert the patient record in the database. I've added also a few delays here just to simulate a long running jobs. And I have here a patient record, a CSV that I'm going to increase for the sake of this demo. And also I have a HTTP file that I'm going to use to test my endpoints. I have import and I also have the get status where I'm using the job ID, getting it from the response of the post. And here I have two endpoints. The other one is the status. Basically I'm getting that import job from the database and checking the status of it. So if you upload a file that's very large file, and you need to cancel it. Currently, from this perspective, you can't. And here is this video, we're going to use multiple components. One is Redis, and another one is cancellation tokens. First, let's add a new status to our job status here. I'm going to add canceled as five, and I'm going also to add a date time here, canceled at. This will be used when querying the report to see if it is canceled or not. Now, why do we need Redis? I'm going to use Redis in a very interesting functionality that it has. It's not caching, it's PubSub, where you create a subscription, you have a channel, you subscribe to this uh, channel, and then you can either publish or subscribe to this channel by getting the information. So the idea is the user will have an endpoint to query and to cancel a job by ID. And then we will send to this channel a message saying, hey, I need to cancel this channel, this job by ID. And then another process will subscribe to this channel. And if it receive a cancellation message, it will do the cancellation part. Okay. So to get started, we need to add a new get package. Package is stack exchange dot radis. Okay. And then let's make sure to add a connection string here for Redis, which will be localhost and the port. I'm going to run Redis inside the Docker container. Now to register Redis as the pop sub functionality, we need here to register builder.services.addscope. We need to register the I connection multiplexer and here we can say connection multiplexer dot connect and we can specify a connection string let's get the connection string from the configuration so builder dot configuration dot get connection string we called it redis here var redis connection equal to this one and here we can say redis connection well it need to be singleton okay so we added the connection multiplexer now what? Now let's create a new class. I'm going to call it job cancellation service. This service will use the iConnection multiplexer to subscribe and to publish an event saying that we need to cancel a job. So first let's inject iConnection multiplexer. And here let's have a new method here. Public task cancel job async. And we will pass the job ID. Okay, so we are using the ID of the job that we are already saving in the database. And here we need to use the connection multiplexer to create a subscriber. So var subscriber equal connection multiplexer dot get subscriber. And then we can say subscriber dot publish async. And here we need a Redis channel. So I'm going to create here a private field that is 
Redis channel equal new Redis channel and here I'm going to use the name job cancellation and let's specify the pattern to be literal in this case and now in our publish async we can use the Redis channel and we can specify the message in our case it is a job id dot to string you will notice the implicit conversion from string to Redis value which is okay in our case so it's a task so let's return publish async let's add another method which is public task subscribe to cancellation and here i'm going to pass a function that will be executed when you subscribe to the cancellation event func of good and task on cancellation same thing we need to create a subscriber equal connection multiplexer dot get subscriber and then we can return subscriber dot subscribe async to this channel and here in the handler we don't care about the channel but we do care about that job id which is there this value here we can execute the on cancellation with the job id and we need to parse it because job id is the redis value and the func is quid so also here we need to say to string that's it so what's happening now when we need to cancel a job we call cancel job async that will publish a message to the redis channel here saying that this is a job id that we need to cancel and any service that subscribe to cancellation on subscription it will call the func which is on cancellation with the job id that we need to cancel let's register this in our program.cs so builder.services.add singleton job cancellation service now let's create a new endpoint to allow the user to cancel a job so let's go to the endpoints folder here and create a new class cancel import job endpoint it is a static class and it is an extension method on the i endpoint route builder so endpoints dot map post i'm going to use the same route of the status similar one here but with an additional cancel in the route so what do we have we have the id as good we need to inject the context we also need to inject the job cancellation service now that we inject everything we can first check if the job exists in the database so var job equal context dot import jobs dot first or default async we can check that job dot domain id equal to id so let's await this task and make sure that our function here is also async we get the job if the job is null we can return results dot not found simply like that and then here we don't want to cancel any job we only need to cancel the jobs that are running because if it is completed or failed there is no point of cancelling that record so what do you do if job dot status not equal to running return results dot bad request let's make it an object id equal to job id and error equal to job is not running and then we can call the service to cancel the job using cancel job async and we can pass the id of the job let's await that and return results dot okay similar to the object before id and we can have a message saying job cancellation requested something like that let's remove this redundant id here perfect now we have an endpoint that we can use to cancel a job let's also add it to our endpoint file here we have an endpoint that will cancel a job by using redis but how to actually cancel a job we know that cancellation token is being used in our code to perform a task cancellation we can use the same logic but we are not going to rely on the cancellation token provided by the background service instead we are going to create our own cancellation token per job so we are going to create a cancellation token source which is the one that is responsible of cancelling the token so cancellation token source per job so we need a way to store multiple jobs and multiple cancellation token source for that i'm going to use a dictionary but not any type of dictionary i'm going to use concurrent dictionary basically a concurrent dictionary is a thread safe dictionary key value pair 
but you can use it within multiple threads. So, concurrent dictionary of job ID, which is quid, and the value is cancellation token source. Let's call it running jobs and initialize it as an empty dictionary here. So, we have running jobs. The idea is anytime that we are processing a job here in the loop, anytime that we are processing a job, we can create a new cancellation token source. So var cts cancellation token source equal new cancellation token source. And we can add to the running jobs, the concurrent dictionary, the job.domain ID equal to cts. So now every time that we have a job, an enqueued job, a pending job, before running it, we are going to store it in the concurrent dictionary in addition to a cancellation token source. Notice here, if you do cts.token, you can use a cancellation token and you have here cancel as a method. You have cancel after if you want to cancel it after specific time and so on. Make sure to change the cancellation token that being passed to the process job async to use the new token related to that job. So you store a cancellation token source in the concurrent dictionary and you call the process job async with the token related to that job. Let's go down here and do a bit of modification. Basically, I'm going to remove the finally block from here, add save change in both the try and the catch. And I need to catch an additional exception here which is operation cancelled exception so basically if the token here is cancelled we are going to throw an exception and we can simply log information here job has been cancelled and when the job is cancelled we need to change the status to cancelled the cancelled add to be datetime.utc now and to basically perform uh, context.save change async. But here we are not going to pass a cancellation token because it is already being cancelled. We are going to specify cancellation token.none because we need always to run this save changes regardless of the state of the cancellation tokens. One more thing you need to notice something here. If the try block here throw the operation cancelled exception, we are going to handle it here. But what about this one here when we're starting it? Or maybe when we had another exception, file not found, something in the database, anything. So this will also gonna fail. So what I'm going to do here, going to remove this block from here, simply throw, because we are not going to mark it as failed if it is operation cancelled exception. So throw, and here inside the loop, we can try and the exception here operation cancel the exception and here log set the status as cancelled and mark it as save change and since we are outside the job task we can use the cancellation token that is being sent from the background service which is when the application is closed or shut down perfect now we have a cancellation token in place that is being used, but there is no way that we can cancel it yet. So we need a way to subscribe to the cancellation token event. And talking about subscribe, make sure to subscribe to my channel. First, let's inject the job cancellation service that we created early. And here in the beginning of the execution of the background service, when it started, we can subscribe to cancellation. And here, because we have a function that we can pass, we can say job ID, it's a good, this is a job ID that we need. Here we can get the cancellation token from the concurrent dictionary. Subscribe to cancellation, I'm gonna rename it to async and here I'm going to await that. And here we can say if running jobs dot try get value job ID out the cancellation token source, if that succeeded, we can say cts.cancel, can say cancel async as well, why not? And when that is being requested and completed, down here, the process, this token here will be canceled. 
it will throw an operation canceled exception that will be handled here but we need one last bit here is basically to try to remove the cancellation token source from the actual concurrent list job id like this we don't care about the output here so in that case we are cleaning up the concurrent dictionary from any unused or disposed cancellation token source now let's run and test our application database has been created background service is running we don't have any jobs just yet so let's go to the http file run the import created a new file here and we have it now in the temp folder you will notice because we have a delay it's been very slow to execute everything so it's fine now i can go and check the status status is running perfect now we can check cancelled run 404 not found yeah same mistake like always you forgot to register the cancel endpoint I'm going to modify something in the status endpoint, which is basically here, the updated add, because we added a new date time, we can say job.cancel that. Okay, perfect. Now let's run. Everything is running. No pending jobs. Let's import a new file. Perfect. We have a new file now in the temp. Let's check the status. It's running now. And if we check the logs, we can see that we have some data being inserted. Now let's cancel job cancellation requested if we query now the status you will see it is cancelled and if we check here you will see that we have a job has been cancelled this is the log so our job was cancelled we saved it update the import job set cancelled at and status basically status is now cancelled and that's it we have no longer a running job so this is basically how you can deal with cancellation for a long running job in your system. One thing also I need to mention here that this is currently will only run in a single instance of your application basically because we are running this background service and it will check if the job is there but if you have two different instances that are running at the same time they can both execute the same list and process the same file so you need a way to separate that and the way to do that is also using redis as a distributed cache by caching the job id and when the other instance try to create and to use it will fail basically because you are creating a lock for that cache inside redis let me know in the comment below if this is something that you are willing to apply into your projects redis cancellation token cancellation token source this is your recipe to create a robust on-demand cancellation for your processes and if you want to check how to build your own long-running process check my video here